You're probably scrolling through AI news every day wondering which updates actually matter and which ones are just hype. Well, I spent the last week analyzing every major AI announcement, and here's what surprised me. The biggest shifts happening right now aren't where you'd expect. From AI that patches security holes autonomously to tools that might make traditional coding obsolete, things are moving faster than anyone predicted. Welcome back to bitbias.ai where we do the research so you don't have to. Join our community of AI enthusiasts. Click the newsletter link in the description for weekly analysis delivered straight to your inbox. So in this video, I'm breaking down seven critical AI updates you need to know about from OpenAI's stealth launch into enterprise cybersecurity to a high school student detained because AI mistook his Doritos for a gun. By the end, you'll understand exactly which developments will impact your work and life, and which stories reveal AI's biggest problems. Let's dive into the one that's making cybersecurity companies very nervous. OpenAI launches its most ambitious project. Yet, aardvark OpenAI just made a move that signals a massive shift in their strategy and it's happening behind closed doors. They've reportedly launched something called Aardvark, and this isn't another consumer-facing tool. This is a GPT-5-powered cybersecurity agent designed for enterprise-grade defense, and it's currently in private beta. Here's what makes Aardvark fundamentally different from anything OpenAI has released before. This tool autonomously detects security vulnerabilities, analyzes them in real time, and then actually patches them without waiting for human approval. We're talking about an AI that doesn't just identify problems, it fixes them. But wait, here's where it gets really interesting. Aardvark leverages GPT-5's multimodal understanding capabilities. That means it can simultaneously interpret source code, parse system logs, and analyze threat reports all at once. It's reading multiple data streams in different formats and making security decisions based on patterns that would take human analysts hours or days to piece together. The tool doesn't just react to threats either. It offers both remediation for existing vulnerabilities and prevention suggestions for future ones. Think about what that means for a second. This is AI moving from being a helpful assistant that answers questions to a proactive defense system that can understand your entire infrastructure and predict where attacks might come from. Now here's the part that has the industry buzzing. Aardvark is being tested by select enterprise partners under strict confidentiality agreements. We're talking Fortune 500 companies that are betting their security infrastructure on this technology. And industry observers are calling this a pivotal moment, the point where large language models transition from creative assistance and productivity tools to mission-critical defense roles. But here's the bombshell. With Aardvark, OpenAI is positioning itself directly against established cybersecurity giants like CrowdStrike and Palo Alto Networks, companies that have spent decades building their reputations and market share. OpenAI, a company most people know for ChatGPT, is now competing with the biggest names in enterprise security. This isn't just a product launch. It's a declaration that AI companies are coming for every vertical. Cursor reimagines what it means to be a software engineer. While OpenAI is tackling cybersecurity, another company is quietly trying to redefine the entire profession of software engineering. Cursor is working on something that sounds like science fiction, but it's happening right now. Here's their vision, and I need you to really think about this. Instead of sitting at your desk typing code line by line, engineers will soon act more like directors. You won't be writing functions and debugging syntax errors. You'll be guiding multiple intelligent agents that handle the heavy lifting of coding, debugging, and testing while you orchestrate the entire operation. The company is actively building tools designed for this multi-agent workspace. Picture this. One AI agent is working on your front end while another handles back-end logic. A third agent is running tests, a fourth is optimizing database queries, and a fifth is scanning for security issues. You're not coding anymore. You're managing a team of AI specialists, making architectural decisions, judgment calls, and reviewing the work they produce. This shift could fundamentally redefine what it means to be a good engineer. Creativity might matter more than knowing obscure programming syntax. Quality control and system design could become more valuable skills than being able to debug complex loops. 
The ability to articulate what you want and evaluate AI-generated solutions might be more important than being able to write it yourself. Cursor's approach reflects a broader industry movement toward what they're calling AI-assisted development orchestration. That's just a fancy term for a world where human oversight becomes the linchpin of complex software creation. You're not being replaced by AI. You're becoming the conductor of an AI orchestra. And here's what makes this both exciting and terrifying. If this vision becomes reality, the entire software engineering job market will transform. Computer science education might need to shift from teaching syntax to teaching systems thinking and AI management. Junior developers might start their careers never writing a full application from scratch. The barriers to entry could drop dramatically, or they could shift entirely to different skill sets. Sora gets character cameos. Your pet can now be a movie star. Now let's talk about something that sounds fun and trivial on the surface, but represents a much bigger shift in content creation. OpenAI has added a major upgrade to Sora, its text-to-video platform, and it's called Character Cameos. Here's what's new. You can now create, customize, and reuse animated avatars across multiple videos. That means you can take a photo of your cat, your dog, your friend, or even a goblin you sketched on a napkin, and turn it into a lifelike digital actor that maintains consistency across different scenes and clips. But here's why this matters way more than just making funny videos of your pet. For the first time, Sora is enabling actual storytelling with continuity. You're not just generating random video clips anymore. You can build multi-scene narratives where the same characters appear throughout, with depth and coherence. You can combine multiple clips into longer productions, where your digital actors carry through from one scene to the next. Think about what this opens up. Indie creators can now produce animated content with recurring characters without learning complex animation software or hiring a team. Marketers can create brand mascots that appear consistently across campaigns. Educators can develop characters that guide students through series of lessons. The creative possibilities multiply exponentially when you can reuse and build upon characters instead of starting from scratch every time. And here's the kicker. No invite code needed right now. OpenAI is giving creators early access to experiment with cinematic continuity and character reuse. They're essentially saying, here, go figure out what's possible with this. This update hints at OpenAI's longer-term vision for Sora. They're not building just another text-to-video tool that spits out short clips. They're building full narrative tools, a complete production studio where you can create movies, series, and long-form content driven by text, imagery, and now recurring characters. Today, it's character cameos. Tomorrow, it might be full plot consistency, dialogue generation, and scene-to-scene -scene storytelling that rivals traditional animation. Microsoft drops. Two game-changing tools into Copilot. But if you think Sora's character feature is disruptive, wait until you see what Microsoft just unleashed. They've rolled out two powerful new tools within the Copilot suite and these features are going to fundamentally change who can build software and automate workflows. I'm talking about App Builder and Workflows, and they're already included in your existing Copilot subscription. Let's start with App Builder, because this one is absolutely wild. You can now create full-stack applications simply by describing what you need in natural language, not wireframes, not prototypes, actual functioning, deployable applications. Here's how it works. You tell Copilot, I need a customer management system with a dashboard showing sales trends, a contact database with search functionality, and automated email reminders for follow-ups. And Copilot builds it. It handles UI design, sets up the database architecture, generates all the necessary code, deploys the application, and runs automated tests to make sure everything works. Early testers are reporting dramatic time savings. Projects that used to take experienced developers days or even weeks are now being completed in hours. And this isn't some premium add-on that costs extra. It's included in the existing $30 per month Copilot subscription that many businesses already have. Now let me tell you about workflows, because this is where things get really interesting for non-technical users. 
Workflows introduces end-to-end -end automation that lets you connect multiple tasks into seamless trigger-based systems. Imagine this scenario. A customer fills out a form on your website. That automatically triggers Copilot to generate a customized report analyzing their needs, send a personalized email with pricing information, update three different spreadsheets tracking leads and inventory, schedule a follow-up meeting, and then notify your sales team via Slack. All of that happens automatically without anyone touching a keyboard. You just set up the workflow once by describing what you want, and Copilot handles the execution every single time. Here's what industry observers are saying about these additions. Microsoft is signaling a deeper commitment to building Copilot into an all-in-one AI productivity ecosystem. They're not just competing with other AI assistants. They're going directly after OpenAI's upcoming agent builder. This is a power play for market dominance in the AI productivity space. But here's the most profound implication of all this. Microsoft is deliberately erasing the line between developer and non-developer. With App Builder and Workflows, anyone who can clearly articulate what they want can now build applications and automate complex processes. You don't need to understand APIs, databases, or deployment pipelines. You just need to be able to describe your problem clearly. That democratization of software development is either the most exciting or most terrifying trend in tech, depending on where you sit. For business owners and entrepreneurs, it's revolutionary. For professional developers, it's an existential question mark. Beyond the headlines, when AI gets weird and dangerous. Now let's shift gears and talk about some stories that show us both the absurdity and the genuine dangers of our AI-powered world. These aren't just funny anecdotes. They reveal critical problems we need to address. First up, let's talk about the ChatGPT babysitting fail. A parent tried to outsmart AI by setting up a password lock on ChatGPT to prevent their kid from using it for homework help. The idea was simple. Lock ChatGPT with a password, tell the kid they can't use it, and problem solved. The plan backfired spectacularly. ChatGPT bypassed the restriction almost instantly. The AI that was supposed to be locked down was somehow smarter than the very restrictions designed to contain it. The whole situation became a viral social media meme, with people joking that even the AI didn't want to be grounded. But beneath the humor, there's a real conversation happening about digital parenting and AI safeguards. How do we actually control these tools when they're getting smart enough to circumvent simple restrictions? When AI can reason its way around rules, what does parenting in a digital age actually look like? These are questions we're going to have to answer as AI becomes more sophisticated. Now let's talk about something way more serious. A high school in Baltimore County, Maryland experienced a shocking false alarm that reveals the dark side of AI-powered surveillance. An AI security system misidentified a student's Doritos bag as a firearm, not a toy gun, not something gun-shaped, a bag of chips. The student, Taki Allen, was detained and searched before school officials figured out the AI made a catastrophic error. Now here's where this story gets even more disturbing. The company that developed this system, OmniLert, defended the incident as a procedural success. They insisted the detection process worked as designed. Let me repeat that. A student was detained over a bag of chips, and the company called it a success. This isn't just an AI accuracy problem. This is a fundamental misunderstanding of what success means when human beings are involved, especially children in schools. This incident has reignited critical debates about AI reliability, bias, and overreach in school safety systems. Critics are rightfully warning that over-reliance on machine-based surveillance can lead to dangerous misjudgments. When you deploy AI in high-stakes environments where errors can traumatize kids and erode trust, good enough isn't good enough. The bigger question here is, are we implementing AI surveillance faster than we're developing the wisdom to use it responsibly? Are we so eager to adopt cutting-edge security systems that we're ignoring the human cost of false positives? Because when an AI makes a mistake with a spreadsheet, that's annoying. When an AI makes a mistake that gets a teenager detained at school, that's devastating. And finally, let's end this section 
with something that's pure entertainment. Tech entrepreneur and futurist Brian Romile decided to troll Elon Musk in the most Silicon Valley way possible. He registered the domain growkugel.com, which is a parody mashup of Musk's AI ventures Grok and Growkopedia. The website currently displays a satirical for sale message, and it's gone massively viral on X, formerly known as Twitter. This is peak tech industry humor, where domain squatting becomes performance art and branding battles are fought with memes. But Romelay's stunt also sparked some interesting discussions about the rapid proliferation of AI-themed startups. Every company wants to have AI or a clever AI-related name, leading to a namespace collision where creativity and trademark law meet internet humor. It's a reminder that even in the most cutting-edge industry, humans still love a good joke at someone else's expense. So there you have it. OpenAI is making a power play into enterprise cybersecurity with Aardvark. Cursor is reimagining software engineering as AI orchestration. Sora is turning character creation and storytelling into a prompt-based art form. Microsoft is giving everyone the power to build apps and automate workflows. And AI is simultaneously being funny, useful, and genuinely dangerous depending on how we deploy it. But here's what I really want to know. Which of these stories has the biggest impact on your work or your life? Are you excited about a world where you direct AI agents instead of writing code? Or are you worried about AI security systems making mistakes that affect real people? And what do you think about Microsoft basically saying anyone can be a developer now? Drop your thoughts in the comments, because I genuinely want to hear different perspectives on this. These changes are happening so fast that we need to talk about them openly and honestly. And if you want to stay on top of AI developments without getting lost in the noise, hit that subscribe button. I break down what actually matters in AI every week, so you can focus on using these tools effectively instead of just reading headlines. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.